All right, guys, today we are going to try a little bit of an experiment, or I guess I'm just going to be sharing with you guys an observation that I have made. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of feeding today. I'm going to caution you a little bit of live feeding, but for the most part, it's just going to be frozen thought and uh, prey parts and that sort of thing. So if you've ever had an opportunity to speak with me at any of the expos, um, Batias Carnata is one of the things that people always want to talk to me about. And uh, without coming off sounding like a kooky nut, um, I'm always saying how these snakes, the very visual, they watch what I'm carrying in my hands. Uh, they seem to be able to identify me as opposed to other people. They really act uh, more standoffish when there's other people in here or more than one or two people in here uh, checking things out. So they're very in tune with their environment. So. Basically, I'm in here, a lot of these snakes, they are looking at me, at my hands, what I'm doing. Most of them are actually kind of looking at me, but they're not really keyed up. And the reason I believe that is, is because my hands are empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna bring in some chicks and some frog legs, and then uh, let's see if they act any different. So now I'm going to enter the room with some food in my hand. I'm carrying some food. And uh, that's usually when they start kind of like really, really keying up on me. So these packages of turkey parts, turkey gizzards, hearts and livers and all that kind of good stuff, these snakes really dig it. Um, it's like crack sometimes. They get the smell of this stuff and uh, they really go to town. I really notice a big difference. Uh, it's like um, sharks and they smell blood and they, they really go for it. They want that food. It's a little bit different. Uh, they like to eat and they all have their preferences, although most of the ones that have been here the longest will eat uh, all of the food that I offer, um, whether it's frog legs, rodents, uh, bird innards, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they, they will eat all of it, but for some reason these these innards just really get them going. They will all eat it. So you can see these guys. That, you know they will they will come right out and uh, and grab food. Luckily their vision is pretty good. So even though they are in a frenzy, I haven't really had many occasions where you know they're chasing after my feet and that sort of things. And like I said, I normally don't lure them you know, out of the cages uh, like this. So this is one of my breeder females and uh, I try to focus these food items more so on the females because I'm getting them ready for their breeding season. So I'm trying to really get them uh, pumped up with lots of vitamins and lots of protein and calcium and that sort of thing. So I'm uh, focusing more on the females, giving them more food right now. Uh, the females are, or the males rather, are still being fed, of course, but keeping them a little bit trim. And, uh, and the females, I want them to uh, all fatten up and be in their prime when I start pairing things. So despite what you might read on Facebook or uh, any, anything that uh, is coming from Patias keepers. There's not a whole lot of us, but uh, there there are some out there. And the the thing that I'm that I'm hearing from a lot of them is that their animals are super shy feeders. And, and when they finally get to a point where the animal will actually feed in front of them, like that's a big feat. Uh, I've been there. I've done that. And these guys now, uh, obviously, they are to the point where they just eat just like any other snake that's you know super hungry that wants to come out and grab some food they, they're not shy feeders you just need to you just need to give them time to settle in and really uh, get dialed in as to your protocol as to what you know how how you do your thing and they start to learn and, and get used to it and again like I'm always saying you know I, I very rarely take any of these snakes out and I'm wondering if that's what's impeding the progress of getting the, the snakes dialed in. I feel like these snakes all become handleable on their, on their own schedule. It's just that I don't force it. I don't, I don't pull them out. I don't try to tame them. I just do my thing, let them 
uh, acclimate and feed and get really used to me and really used to everything that I'm doing, the sounds, the vibrations, uh, the, the sights and that sort of thing. And then it just seems like as, you know, after a whole bunch of time has passed, and then I can just pull them out. It's not, uh, it's not really a big deal. So I, I don't work on taming them. I just let them do their thing and they seem to just sort of acclimate and get used to everything on their own. So a really good example of an animal kind of acclimating on its own and not being tamed down would be like this big one here. I haven't had him that long. Taking him out pretty much only on camera. So it hasn't been that many times. You can count the times on your one hand. But uh, it was, there was a time where I would never be able to just reach in here and grab this guy and he just kind of acclimate, acclimated on his own. And now... He's just kind of tolerant of me, and he's not, uh, he's not a problem. He's actually become really cool. I'm still a little bit nervous around this dude, but just because he's so big, but he's, uh, he's just become a really cool really cool animal. I think you could even probably tell if you go back and watch some of the older videos when I've pulled this guy out. He just seems to get more calm and more calm, but it's on his own pace and it has nothing to do with me pulling him out and handling him because, like I said, I never do it. But he's just, I think he just learns by looking out the glass and seeing seeing me all the time and just seeing me as a, as no longer a threat and so it's just uh, I don't know it's really weird it's a very strange thing I'm still learning as I'm going trying to pass on information to you guys but <laughs> I think at this point I would have no problem bringing this snake out to do a demonstration or something in front of you know a large group of people I think it's absolutely no problem at this point. If you asked me that about two or three months ago, I would have said, mm, yeah, I'm not sure. But as it stands right now, I'm gonna say no problem. And he's one of my most impressive ones just due to his size. So anyway, all right, you guys, hope you enjoy this. My favorite snakes, obviously doing work getting it done so basically you guys that's it this is uh, what I go through about two to three times per week uh, especially right now because I'm cycling um, everybody trying to boost the metabolisms and, and get everything ready for reproduction so I will start pairing here probably in the next one or two weeks and I will start uh, palpating the females see if I can feel follicles and uh, if I do feel follicle development in any of those females, then of course I will increase the, um, the uh, intervals of pairing. And uh, the very diet, I'm a big promoter of the very diet. Even in other snakes, if you can get your uh, pythons and boas and other snakes to eat a very diet, I, I'm a big, um, big believer in that. It seems to make the snakes look better. They have more uh, condition to their bodies and uh, it, you know it's just it's more uh, it, it aligns itself with what things are like in the wild Pattaya's mostly being visual hunter so anything that's moving they're going to be chasing it down it could be reptiles including other snakes birds and rodents and fish and whatever's moving frogs and that sort of thing uh, they obviously use their sense of smell to uh, locate food so Something like that might lead them into a nest of birds or even bird eggs and that sort of thing. So just really get creative with um, all the different available food sources out there. And I, I'm, I'm doing it all. I'm really doing it all. Even when I have um, infertile eggs in snake clutches from other snakes, I'm usually feeding it to these guys. Uh, just getting a varied diet, different vitamins and that sort of thing, different uh, combinations. You know, one food item may be high in calcium and another high in vitamin B. 
uh, and, and that sort of thing. So just kind of doing that and getting everything prepared. Uh, this was sort of documenting what I do on a, on a weekly basis. Every two or three days I'm out here doing this. For me, it's just work, kind of like um, breeding snakes to me is almost like being a farmer. Uh, you need to put in your work. You need to, you need, you need to feed and water uh, your uh, stock, I guess you could say, to get something to happen. Um, if you're inconsistent, if you're lazy, if you're not around to do it, or you find other things more important to do, like playing video games and whatever it is that people do, and you're not putting the work into your collection, then it's going to be tough. Your, uh, your, your, your amount of, of output and work is, is going to dictate what you get in return. So I'm out here doing my thing, and today was more for entertainment purposes, I guess. Um, I usually don't get those snakes to come out that far from their cages. Uh, but uh, it makes for, for good uh, camera footage anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and um, we'll see what comes uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Got a few things going on, so we will come at you again. Thanks for watching. Take care, you guys. See you next time.